painting a mural. A mural. <laughs> Jinx. Jinx. <laughs> We're gonna paint a mural. It, what's gonna be in our cornfield, I wonder? So the trick with painting, really on any material with any kind of paint, is layering and being smart about how you layer. With acrylic paint, you can layer multiple, multiple, multiple times. With watercolors, you have to be really careful how you layer. This is acrylic paint. We use mostly house paint. We're making the fence. There's a fence. So Maybe the, the cornfield is just layers and layers of corn plants. You paint green long lines up, and then you paint the leaves. So we just had layers of corn plants in the background that were a darker color and then they kind of got brighter as they came forward so that they'd pop as they came forward and then you layer up a bunch and you get sort of the depth, the illusion of depth. Yeah, and you don't have to just paint a couple in the front. I did some extra texture on the fence to make it look older Yeah, and yeah. painted shadows everywhere all the time, always, shadows everywhere. And then we started drawing all of the details with... I started with sidewalk chalk, which is what I usually use when I'm drawing the details for a mural because it's really easy to wash it off afterwards um, or change it around. But I decided this time I was having a hard time seeing the sidewalk chalk because the background was so busy. So I used some chalk markers thinking that it would work just as well and it didn't, it stained the paint behind it. So it still shows. I mean, most of the most of it got painted over, but there's still little bits of it here and there. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be a scarecrow in a cornfield. Tyler posed for the scarecrow, the original. So the body is her, and the hair is her. And then I replaced her face, and then gave her a different hat. She had a hat when she posed for me, but we gave her a different hat. There's my paint tray for this one. It's a bunch of cheese and crackers trays, all kind of tetris together. Mm. <laughs> but it was nice because I could hold the whole thing and I could have a bunch of different colors and there were little flat spots on the top that I could mix the colors on. So I didn't have to constantly be bending over. I could have all of my colors and I had one of the little spots had water in it so that I could rinse my brush or water down the paint. So the process of painting all of these little details is most of the time I start with the dark colors and build up the highlights from there. Sometimes I do shadow washes on top where you water down the darker color of paint and you can darken things afterwards. But this is a combination of all different techniques with little washes of highlights and shadows and also wet blends where you take the colors and you mix them wet. Instead of having to blend them when the other one is dry, that's yeah. hard. I almost never mix colors. I usually just take things straight out of the buckets. We've got some primary colors and some secondary colors, and I'll just take them straight out of the buckets. And unless I need a lot of the same color, I won't mix colors. I mix them on the brush, or I'll mix them on the floor next to where I am, or on the table next to where I am. But I mix it as I go, mix it on the artwork. I like the texture and the kind of gives it more subtlety, more interest, more differences and fun. Yeah. These pumpkins were a struggle. I struggled with everything because I had I wanted everything to be orange and green and blue. This blue sky and the green cornfield and these and orange pumpkins and the, the scarecrow had a lot of orange in her outfit. But we're almost out of orange paint and we're almost out of good yellow. We have a yellow that's really white. It's very it's not saturated. Even if you have yellow and red, you can't make a good orange unless the yellow is really saturated. It's a good bright yellow. Mommy makes up some gray for me for my cat. Yep, I did. And I tried to like paint the whiskers, but it just it just didn't work out well. You guys designed some little animals to be hanging out with the scarecrow in the cornfield. What'd you guys draw? I drew a bunch of crows with a bunch of like symbols on their bellies. Yeah. For some reason I put symbols on their bellies. To make them individual? Yeah. Yeah, I liked the symbols. We didn't do the symbols on the mural though. Uh, and um, then these are Tyler's drawings. 
She drew two crows and she drew a little doggo. This is a simple little shape. I don't draw like dogs that much. Yeah, and I made you do it facing the other direction. <laughs> so not only did you have to draw a dog, but you had to draw, draw a dog facing away from the audience and, and in a weird pose where he's standing up on the pumpkin. You did a beautiful job. So once you guys had finished drawing your drawings and Tyler had posed as the scarecrow, then I worked on the layout for the mural in Photoshop. So it's layers of images in Photoshop. So there's the sky, then the cornfield, then the ground, then the fence, some pumpkins, then Tyler, then changing some colors and adding the details, changing the face out and the hat. There's probably close to 50 layers in Photoshop of different, you know, tree branches and leaves and a couple different versions of the hat. Tyler was wearing jeans leggings that didn't have the jeans stitching, and so I kind of drew in some jeans stitching in the drawing just to remind myself to do it because it, it looked better. <laughs> It's enormously helpful to lay everything out in Photoshop before we start painting, especially with three of us working on it at the same time so that we all know what we're doing. Yeah, it worked out. This is trying to warm up the color of the boots because the boots were blending into the fence. They weren't warm enough. There's Sam's chubby, chubby little crow. So we based the crows black and then they got some highlights and shadows. Sam worked really hard on learning how to wet blend some highlights and shadows on her cat and her crows. You did such a good job. Yeah. It's not an easy thing to learn how to do. You have very good brush control. Pumpkins. Baby birds over there on the left. The three baby birds. What are playing. the baby birds saying? They're playing. They're playing um, air tag. It's like a game where you like you have to be something that can fly. And like, it's a thingy where you play tag. And when you get tagged, you're out for the whole game. And you just fly around in the sky. <laughs> Sounds fun. And now Sam's cheering up the kitty. The kitty was sleeping, but she looked a little sad. So you cheer her up. Yay. So she got a little smiley face and she got some little eyelashes and she got some Big rosy blush. pink cheeks. Big blush. I really like how this one turned out. I think it's really cute. You can cute. see my two talking birds. Yeah, they're talking to each other. And there's your doggo. Uh, so adorable. Uh, 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 uh. Woof, woof. Hey guys. I like the colors of this one and I like how happy it is. The last mural was really fun because it told a story, but it was really dark. So I wanted to make sure this one was brighter. And I think we got it. I think it's brighter. Success. Success! You can't even tell that I didn't have any orange. Bye! Hot chocolate and snuggles? Yeah!